creepypasta is kind of a last art form on the internet. Maybe not a particularly great art form, but one that seems to have died over the course of the past decade. Or maybe that's just a reflection of me growing up and not being in the target demographic for creepypastas anymore. Whatever the case, ARGs seem to have taken up the space that creepypastas used to in the public consciousness, probably for the best. However, due to my formative years being spent reading them, there are some creepypastas that I have a huge amount of nostalgia for. Ben Drowned is a big one for a lot of people, I think, but I couldn't really get into it when I was a kid because I was afraid of watching the associated videos. Anansi's Goatman story and No End House were pretty big influences on my developing mind. Pen Pal was adapted into an actual novel that I never read, but I remember thinking that was really cool and that maybe I could write a novel too. But there's one that stuck out among all the others for me, in spite of the fact that looking back, it's extremely goofy and not too great. NES Godzilla Creepypasta. It's basically a modern form of epic poetry, you know? A quest across the cosmos through several different planetary bodies, each named for a different part of the human psyche. But its length does make it quite silly at points, and it's full of the kind of melodrama that I ate up as a kid. The cartridge is possessed by the literal embodiment of the devil himself, and also the narrator's dead girlfriend who appears in the form of an angel, which is, um, Kinda Silent Hilly, I guess, but if it was not good, and a little weirdly misogynistic in its execution. So any of the games after 4. However, despite my general groaning about the plot, there are many reasons why I fixated so much on this story when I was a kid. Red, the main antagonist and representation of evil, is actually quite compelling once you can suspend your disbelief enough to get past the silliness of the whole demon possessing an NES cartridge setup. His presence is genuinely imposing, and the various sequences where he's just chasing the main character down endless levels with the mere run on the screen are horrifying. Maybe it's just my nostalgia speaking, but he still sends a shiver down my spine. In a lot of ways, the pure unimaginable terror of Red reminds me a lot of Gygus from Earthbound, which I'm sure Red was largely inspired by considering his design. A haunting, aberrant terror beyond all human comprehension. Though Gygus at least has some element of tragedy to his position, Red is purely malignant. Of course, the writing is only half of Red, and the other half is the amazing sprite work. This goes through the whole of the story, the presentation is absolutely phenomenal. It all looks like it could have been on a real NES, until it doesn't, and becomes truly beyond anything it was capable of, the nightmare blending into the hardware just enough to show you something is off without totally destroying the illusion. There's something so visceral about the work on display here. I'm not much of a visual artist, so I don't really have the depth to critique it, but the empty void of NES transparent black backgrounds and the harsh colors of the game absolutely enhance reading the narrative. As you scroll down the page reading, there's always dread in your mind about what's going to pop up next. The main character's fears while progressing through the game mirror your own. What will be in the next level? One of my favorite designs in the totality of the story is Face, a creepy character who appears on the wall in quiz levels in order to ask questions. Face cycles through several different emotions, but otherwise appears as a static mask. There's something dreadful about masks in general, what they hide and what they signify. Being named for a face is fitting considering he isn't one, he's a false one. A facade of the face, just as the game is the facade of Godzilla rendered in digital space. The unnatural expressions that it makes through its position as a mask on a wall activate something in the uncanny valley for me, especially the ones that the writer clarifies that he doesn't understand. Vague, abstracted feelings, masked behind thoughts that I can't quite get past. Even though Face is easily my favorite character, he's not who's the best. And when I say the best, I don't mean what I think is the best. I mean what the game thinks is the best. Solomon is one of the additional playable monsters that was manifested by the ROM cartridge. Unlike the other new addition to the cast, Anguirus, Solomon is a completely original character created for NES Godzilla. He's a demon who once served Red and now goes on a journey to purge himself of Red's influence on him. He's told the overpower of being able to fly and doing twice the damage Godzilla does, but that's not what makes him the best. It's this screen. He's just the best. But seriously, I find it interesting that such an archetype is present in the story. A darker, edgier, foil character to the main character Godzilla, who's still heroic. Kind of like NES Godzilla's own Aragorn or something. For a creepypasta, NES Godzilla feels much more like a traditional epic quest narrative than a traditional spooky story, evidenced by character types like this. Perhaps that's why I was so drawn to it as a child. NES Godzilla is not a particularly great creepypasta. It's very overdramatic, the twists and ideas at play are very silly, and ultimately it's a little too feel-good at the end. Despite this, the art is fantastic and a lot of the core character concepts lead to it having this strange epic feel, which is probably what drew me into it so much when I was 12. Needless to say, it's my favorite creepypasta of all time. Which... isn't exactly that prestigious of a title, I know. 
There's no other one that still invokes the same feelings in me all these years later, even with the knowledge that it's incredibly flawed. I never read the sequel and I don't plan on it. This has been Arcane Everlasting, who kinda wish this silly creepypasta was like this were still around, signing off. Thank you for watching.